there's a limitation with how much we can change it, I would say, because we will we, we get gifted it from from previous generations for sure. And, and there'll be unique strains get passed down your family line, you know, which I think is amazing. And I think what's even more amazing is, is, you know, women's breast milk contains unique sugars. They're unique to her that feed those family line bifidobacteria, for example, oh, wow. that, I didn't know that, that don't feed other bifidobacteria nearly as well. You know, it's, it's a pretty amazing process when we go into the finer details and, and you just get to really appreciate the uniqueness and nuances when you when you delve into it more. Um, and it also makes you worry about alterations of that ecosystem to a far greater degree too, because you know it's not easily fixable. And you know, um, I think that thing of custodianship of your familial line of microbes, if you take that on board, it really changes your, your choices mm -hmm. in life in terms of what you're going to do to that ecosystem. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so we get it, we inherited this ecosystem and then we can change populations within that by through dietary factors, lifestyle factors uh, and medications and medications like antibiotics, we know can cause extinction events to that. So, and, and many people would argue that with every course of antibiotics, our ecosystem gets less and less diverse. So we can only pass on what we've got. You know, so, you know, I, I would be able to pass on less than what my mom passed to me, for example, sadly, because I was dosed tons of antibiotics when I was a kid. I grew up in the seventies where every single sniffle or cough or sneeze, they're like, take antibiotics, take antibiotics, take antibiotics. You know, it was really only when I was in my, um, 18, when I kind of discovered, <laughs> moved out of home and like discovered the world and discovered health, that was like, oh my, I, you know, I've had almost no antibiotics since then, you know, um, but it's like, yeah, so. I can still taste the amoxicillin if I just conjure the memory of every time I had a cold, <laughs> I was given amoxicillin, <laughs> the, the viscosity of it, the flavor of it, the pink look yep. of it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've got that clear, very clear in my memory too, sadly. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's this cool study published in, in Gut a couple of years ago where they were looking at one person's ecosystem, um, essentially taking almost like daily stool samples. And the ecosystem was immensely stable without any change of diet or lifestyle. Gave them a, a, a single shot of, you know, in the blood, bloodstream, intravenous antibiotics. Mm. Nine species went extinct. Wow. Even through the blood, through an injection. That's crazy. Yeah. From a single dose. Of that antibiotic. And to me, that was just like mind blowing that we can lose nine species from a single antibiotic exposure. Yeah. And it caused massive disruptions in this ecosystem. In fact, there was a species that went from like 0.02% up to 96% the day afterwards um, that, that they hadn't even named before. And then they named it after themselves, as researchers often do. Um, I think it was like Bork Falkii, Ceftriaxion, or something like that, a very funky name. Um, so that was one of the interesting things, was like how much dynamic system there was for the first week or two afterwards. It was crazy dynamic, that ecosystem. And it settled into a new pattern a few weeks after that, a wow. different pattern than it was beforehand. But I think the thing for me is two years afterwards, still nine species were missing. Wow. You know, and you're like, oh. And how many antibiotic courses do we get? You know, I had a child patient the other day that had, you know, 14 by the time they're three. Um, and you're like, what's happened to their ecosystem? It's like, we've narrowed it down so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have, in, we have things like that. We have proton pump inhibitors, you know, widely used class of medications that I've mentioned before increase SIBO risk hugely, but there, there are selective antibacterials too, that they actually kill bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they actually decrease the diversity of ecosystem dramatically. And we've got patient people taking these for years on a daily basis, you know, and again, we're just narrowing this, this population. So while we were gifted from our, you know, previous generations, it gets narrow and narrow in that situation. And we can obviously make certain proportional changes with dietary fact, um, interventions or our dietary choices. Prebiotics can make pretty major, um, shifts in, in proportions of microbes, um, you know, we know that that we can have temporary increases in diversity by spending time in nature, you know, going out for a lovely hike in, in the woods or in the rainforest, um, organic gardening, all these things will temporarily boost diversity. And if we're doing it daily, then we get these lovely, <laughs> you know, co continual burst, boosts of, of um, diversity that, that, that come with that. But they're, they're generally just temporary visitors again. And I mean, it's not to say we don't pick up microbes, because I think we've always picked up microbes from a fecal oral root. You know, if you go back before we had such clean water supplies, 
is, you know, we were always picking up microbes from people upstream from us. You know? or bathing in polio. Yeah, or, or bathing in, but in other people's gut bacteria. And if they didn't have gut diseases, it's like, that's a good way of passing on microbes. You know, yeah. I, that, or when I was visiting Sri Lanka, they have this amazing system of canals that were set up, you know, 1300 years ago um, that go for like hundreds of kilometers. And, but people are out there, they're, feces and their laundry and stuff goes into that canal and oh, it's the way it's been for a thousand years and people downstream are bathing in <laughs> that same same water and as you know yes if they've got giardia or salmonella or something that's obviously going to be a bit problematic and it is an occasion obviously but it's also a way of passing on microbes so there are ways of, of getting some species back in that we've lost but it really comes to to feces exposure whether that's accidental or whether that's intentional when it comes to things like fecal transplants where we, we yeah. can we gain species in a more permanent way that way yeah.